This is the American Alpine Club's Legacy Series, a video tribute to the visionary climbers who made the sport what it is today, and a commitment to securing their legacies. Okay, <clears throat> the day I drove in to the valley was September 58, and Harding and his buddies were working on the nose. And when I saw that, I said, oh my God, I've come to the right place. And so I went over to Camp 4 because I heard that's where the climbers stayed and I recognized Harding from the photographs. So I just introduced myself and, and he says, well, how would you like to do some real climbing? So he showed me how to hip belay. There were no belay devices, no rappel devices either. The hammer I used on the nose long before harnesses, these patches sewed on after a couple years because the, the, this leather would be wearing through. So I went up on these tiny holes and started to slip, and I fell, went down 50 feet like this, <laughs> tried to hold on, and um, it didn't turn me off at all. I said, yeah, this is, this is the great stuff. I just have to get smarter, you know? I just have to learn more. My next big scary experience was following Swedland up the arrow tip. I'd never seen an exposure like that before. It just about knocked me out. But on the upper half of the climb, I got used to it, I adapted, and I started enjoying it. The next big climb, Kness was 59. East face of Keeler Needle was 60. 61, uh, west face of Leaning Tower. 62, the Rostrum. Then I did the dihedral wall on El Cap. Third ascent of the nose in 63. I led the uh, Great Roof, uh, something I'll never forget. It was such a beautiful thing. I felt like I was climbing up the vault of a cathedral. And then in 65, I was going to go back to school, so I needed to make some extra money. So I worked during the summer, bartender at the Owani. Boy, what an education in booze I got. Uh, the tips were fabulous, and that enabled me to buy a Nikon and four lenses. But uh, for a serious camera was this, a Retina 2A. The first number of years, I was just grabbing what I could while we climbed, waiting until the leader seemed to be in a good spot and grabbing a shot without telling him I wasn't belaying him. <laughs> Quite a game. Then when the valley scene started really developing and it became clear that a real history was going on here, and so I tried to get uh, bits of the history that was going on, especially the social life. That's when I started getting serious about Camp 4. It was really an amazing bunch. Harding was a jokester, always wanted to have fun. Robbins was the opposite, very terse, almost grim. Uh, Pratt was considered to be the best free climber, but he never bragged about it. The whole motive was I didn't want the experience to disappear. It seemed too special. 